Welcome to the Content Supply Show. This is a show where we bring together entrepreneurs and experts all across the internet, especially those who are bringing tons of value to the world from behind their computer to front of stage. We break down their creative ideas, strategies, and stories that guided them along the journey of entrepreneurship so that we can all learn and be inspired together. On the podcast today, we have Emily Volds. She is a financial advisor, a bookkeeper, an all-around business administrative superstar that helps social entrepreneurs track their finances efficiently. That way, we as entrepreneurs can make better decisions in business, manage our money in a way that actually helps our vision and our purpose. And so on this call today, it was kind of like a mini coaching call for me that I can learn the right tools and practices But just overall, it's so helpful for us as entrepreneurs to really sync up our financial plans with our business plans so they are harmonious and that they make sense together. So I'm super excited to share what Emily has to say. So before we get into the interview, let's chat Content Supply. Content Supply is a creative content as a service business where online brands and entrepreneurs can subscribe to a monthly supply of custom content to grow their business. So content like video, podcast, image, and blogs. This content is custom built to fit into three phases of your marketing experience. So one, free content on social media, two, paid ads, and three, content used for paid programs, memberships, or funnels. We're all limited on time and resources to produce all the content we want and need to support our customer's journey from point A to point Z. Content supply helps supply the filling of that gap. It's like the PB&J between your bread of your product or service and the bread of your funnel or your conversion tool. Go on over to contentsupply.com to learn more. So now let's get into the interview. How and why did you get into financial advising, bookkeeping, accounting? Um, why finances? Um, it was kind of just uh, the luck of the draw and what I, what I got experience in partially. Um, you know, I worked in some office settings and for some nonprofits and small businesses and just doing sort of whatever uh, you know, at like entry level, you kind of just do whatever they tell you to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I got some experience with it in that way. And then I started learning about uh, virtual assistants and um, and this whole online world that like, if you don't know about it, you have no idea. And then once you start learning about it, it just like opens up this whole, this whole other level of business. Mm-hmm. Um, so I started exploring that more and you know, I started as like an admin administrative assistant and bookkeeper because I, I had been told by people who had experience online that, that the bookkeeping in particular was um, definitely a good skill to have and to uh, market and things like that. So, um, and then over the course of last year, I just really honed in on bookkeeping and I dropped the admin stuff. Although it always comes into play, like even in our back and forth, that's sort of largely administrative stuff. So I think that's really like the foundation of um, business, you know, the behind the scenes of a business is just like general admin. Um, So those skills definitely have informed a lot, but, um, but yeah, just sort of, it wasn't necessarily a something that I pursued, but it was something that I developed the skill of and over, over the last couple of years and have just sort of, um, you know, expanded my understanding and my, my skills and, and also my network and, um, and who I'm serving with the particular skill set because it can, especially with bookkeeping, it can really vary depending on mm-hmm. um, your ideal client. Yeah, completely. So, uh, to, to learn a few more things then, uh, was this something you always wanted to do since you were young? What, what was it like when you're young, like, what is it that you wanted to do? What, 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 like, did you want to chase as a career or life? 
I don't know that I ever, I might have had ideas when I was really young, but I don't know that I ever knew. Like I got out of high school and I had no idea. And I went to college and I took general requirements and I was, I just couldn't do that anymore. And then I really got into traveling and that definitely became a passion for, still is, but was like really shaped my life for a number of years. Um, and so I, you know, part of what the appeal of online work for me has always been is the flexibility to be able to work, um, to be place independent, essentially, um, as long as there's Wi-Fi. So that has also been part of what, what really roped me in at the beginning. Um, but I don't know, I've been trying to figure out that question of like, what do I want to be for so long? <laughs> and I talk to like 60 year olds and I'm like, I'm just trying to figure it out. And they're like, yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and, and, and I, I think it's okay that you don't, I mean, do you really have to like figure it out air quotes, right? Um, where I think just pursuing and leaning into things that you're interested in and, you know, or things to support a lifestyle that you want like you just said, I, I, you want to have the location independent lifestyle to be able to travel and have that flexible time. You there? Okay. You froze for a second. Uh, to have that flexible yeah, time yeah. and bookkeeping accounting, you know, supporting entrepreneurs and online businesses is that way for you to do that. And so it sounds like, uh, you know, as far as knowing what you want to do, it sounds like you do know what you want to do and how you want to spend your time and, you know, what you do with your business is a way to help support that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's, it definitely supports like the lifestyle that I want. And, um, and I think there's also something that's really interesting about resources and, um, and like the personal aspects of how resources impact us, but then also like on a larger scale societally of how um, resources are so influential in terms of what you can and cannot do and what, you know, what gets empowered and what gets disempowered and, and all of that sort of thing. And, and ultimately that's, you know, what money is. It's just like this middleman to our resources or that's how I see it. Um, so I think there's something really interesting in that also. And, and so, yeah, it is like, I enjoy helping people um, work more productively and more efficiently with their money because it then enables them to, um, you know, to, to actualize what their goals are more. Um, so that's sort of, I, I like to focus on like what, what the ultimate goals of a business are and then how to sort of help, how to frame bookkeeping in a way that helps to support that. Um, just so it's not entirely boring. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so but then with bookkeeping and also, uh, I know like your Facebook page, your website, talk about administrative services. What all do your services include when someone comes to you to be like, Emily, I want to hire you to make my business run more smoothly? what is it that you advise and help them on? Yeah, that reminds me, I need to change my Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe, yeah, maybe that's wrong, but. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm in a little bit of a transition at the moment. Um, I am no longer taking on done for you clients. So that's what I was doing in 2017. And um and I have people that are really awesome and I love them and I'm going to keep them of course, but, um, but I'm really going to be focusing more on training in 2018. And so i um, really like teaching business owners or team members that want to learn how to manage uh, the business's bookkeeping, um, teaching them how to do it, how to get, you know, cleaned up or how to implement a, like a more efficient system. Um, and I'm also going through the Profit First certification. And so I'm, um, later in the year, I'm going to rope that in also to the training. So I'm looking at doing, my, my services are really shifting more towards um, working with people who maybe aren't at the level of 
needing or wanting to hire a bookkeeper, but, um, but know that they need some help in that department um, to get it to a better place. So, and then Profit First is really, really great for helping people manage their money and really give their money a purpose and, you know, keep their expenses in check and make sure that they're paying themselves and all of that kind of thing. So um, I think it's just sort of like a good organizational tool for working with your money. So that's also going to be something that I work with people on more. Um, yeah. Okay, great. So uh, with that training, would you package it up as like an online program or course? Uh, or is it something that people uh, sign up for a program to get more personalized coaching with you directly? How, what does that look like? Yeah, I have both. I have a course actually through Create Your Laptop Life, mm -hmm. the academy. Um, so I have that course. So that's sort of like entry level. Um, and then if people want more one-on-one -on -one support, then um, I'm actually beta testing a, <clears throat> a program for a three-call training program that the course is included with that as, you know, sort of supplemental material. And then we have um, three calls over the course of like five or six weeks. And, um, and so we talk about stuff and then, and then the um, client goes and works on stuff. And then we have another call and I answer questions and we talk about something else. And so it's really like, um, it's a way to get some one-on-one -on -one support and to get questions answered and to figure some um, like good solid systems out. Um, but then it's also, you know, an accountability tool because it's really, really easy to put off bookkeeping. Um, and so it's, you know, when you have someone who, when you're meeting with someone every two weeks, then you have a little bit more incentive to, um, to get it done and to, to get it to the place that you want it to, because bookkeeping doesn't have to be like this hugely time consuming thing if you set it up correctly. Um, and so the goal is to like either get stuff cleaned up or to get and or to get your system to be just like really efficient and um, to get a solid workflow in place. So, um, and then the course is, <laughs> the course is um, just sort of supplemental. It has a lot of like tutorials, video tutorials in it. So um, more of like the how to do something is in the course and then the, the the calls are more for when the inevitable um questions arise there's always unique circumstances in bookkeeping I completely agree well and there's a whole tech side now you know that didn't exist 10 years ago really yeah right? with, with all the new solutions because where you and i first got connected was uh you know, through Julie, you know, Julie's one of my clients and payment processing needed to happen. And we wanted to avoid the fees that do exist with, uh, you know, services or, or, you know, products like PayPal or Stripe or quick, you know, there's just, there's so many out fresh books. There's so many out, so many services out there. And so we're trying to find the most efficient way to remove fees but also to um, have invoices paid. And so uh, is that also something you advise on is improving those workflows or those processes for business owners? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I have a couple of programs in particular that I recommend just from what I've experienced. Uh, you know, I think that they're the most efficient and, um, and, and for like, particular things that you're trying to accomplish, they can be really helpful. Um, so yeah, definitely setting up a system that is, um, that doesn't make you pull your hair out and that kind of works itself because there are, at this point, bookkeeping is almost um, irrelevant. Like bookkeepers are almost, it's, it, you're right. It's a totally different game than it was 10 years ago. The whole um, data entry thing is just it's not really what I do it's I like make sure that the computer is doing it correctly <laughs> it's like that's more my work um and 
so there is, there's definitely a lot of ways to automate bookkeeping and to have it do itself. And then you just sort of go in and make sure. Um, and then you also go in and you can look at your financial data and then you can make, make better business decisions because you actually have a clear understanding of, of your money and your finances. So, um, so yeah, you know, my goal is to set up those systems so that they work for them, like work on their own as much as possible. And, and then, so that people also understand how they're set up because if I just set something up and then they have no idea how it works, you know? Oh, that, that would be crazy if they had no idea how it works. Well, you know, and then they would hire you again, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so are, are you someone who, uh, do you customize and provide like platform assistance to really any platform that works for the specific business? Or are you more of like a one or two product kind of uh, advisors? How, how do you approach that with businesses? In terms of accounting software, I really just work in QuickBooks Online and Xero. Um, and I definitely have my reasons for it. It's, um, to me, they just, they're, they're going to work the easiest. And it's like, if you're really trying to set up an efficient system, then, um, then you should work with the best tools to help you do that. Um, you know, something like FreshBooks, it's, it's like a project management tool that has some bookkeeping aspects in it, but there's no reconciliation feature. Like it doesn't bring in the remaining transactions in your bank account. It, so it, it, it doesn't like, it doesn't actually give you a full picture of your finances. And there's also no way to check any of that because there's no reconciliation and unless you like go through and manually look at everything. So, um, so things like FreshBooks, it's just like, it, if you want to use it, it can be really helpful, but it isn't like a full service accounting program. Um, I know there's other accounting programs like Billy app and, or Billy and wave apps and, and things like that. I think wave is like a decent free option. Um, and it'll, it'll get you like to a certain place. And, and then like, eventually you're probably going to need to move up into something else. But, um, I don't work in QuickBooks because, or sorry, I don't work in wave apps because, um, it's just, it's not really where my clients work. And then it's also, um, there's just some limitations to it that I find frustrating. So I love QuickBooks because, um, I think it has a lot of different price point like entry points with their pricing um and so you can get on their simple start plan for 10 bucks a month they have different specials during different times of the year but um and it's really like it's gonna do everything that you need it to do in terms of accounting and not necessarily at the simple start level but as you grow and as you need more features then you just upgrade and it's a really seamless process and, um, and so your foundation is really solid if you start in QuickBooks. Um, I also like it because I find that it connects with the most number of banks and connecting your banks on bank feeds saves you so much time and so much hassle. Um, that alone is, is worth finding an accounting program that, that will connect with your bank. Um, so those are sort of my two main things about QuickBooks um, that I really like about it and that I, I talk about in, when comparing it to other things. Um, I also really love Xero. It's really good for international use, um, but it's more expensive than QuickBooks. I think the entry is like $30 a month or there's, there's a cheaper one, but it has a limit on the number of transactions. So, you know. Yeah. So then uh, Xero and QuickBooks kind of offer the same solution, so to speak. It's just, it, those are your kind of top two preferences, it sounds like. Okay. Yeah. I would say they're pretty similar. Um, QuickBooks is hard to beat because it's just the industry standard. Mm -hmm. It's so, it's been around for so long. Um, but I think Xero and QuickBooks Online are pretty comparable. QuickBooks Desktop and the online version are different also, just to put that out there. This is great. 
I feel like as a business owner, freelancer, entrepreneur, what have you, I, I think there's, there can be a lot of confusion with what, what solution to chase and to run after. And, and I think uh, like from FreshBooks to Zero to QuickBooks, you know, there are different brands we follow who are sponsored or have affiliate, you know, links and, and sell these different services. And so it kind of gives that, that validation and, you know, that credibility, which obviously they all work uh, depending on what you need out of it. But mm -hmm. uh, I think having the, having this direction from someone who's actually doing it on behalf of successful businesses um, gives validation to what you teach, what you revise on, but also just kind of helps those who uh, aren't as educated on best accounting and bookkeeping practices. Because uh, yeah. you know, and I find it interesting too because you mentioned it earlier, where um, because of all the technology that exists to help automate or improve all of these processes. Uh, and how it's, it was very different 10 plus years ago. Uh, and, you know, it is very interesting. I, I mean, I took an accounting class. It's been a while ago, but they, they start you out learning the older way. Uh, and and I, it totally makes sense because obviously you need to learn the how of doing things versus just like the simple operation of letting the computer and machine do it for you. So uh, I think there's a lot of value in, in your services for sure. You know, getting people and entrepreneurs to save money um, and to have the best practices in place to, to use money. So um, to kind of package all this up, and I know you've already kind of hit on it, but uh, how do you define success for yourself and your business? Um, I think for me, I have more of a multiple bottom line model in terms of, uh, for me, it's not just about the profit. Part of it definitely is about providing for myself and making a living. Absolutely. Um, but there's definitely other components that are important to me and that I want to explore more in this, in this year. Um, you know, just sort of looking at, um, environmental and social justice tie-ins to, you know, finances and to funding and investment and things like that. Um, so I think that for me and my success, it looks like, um, you know, not, not just providing bookkeeping and calling it a day, but also looking at like the bigger um, the bigger implications of of money and of um, how how it impacts people differently and how it impacts um, our like earth's resources and and what we have to work with and it's a little bit working online it's a little bit uh, it it doesn't feel like there's as huge of an impact maybe as um, as a brick and mortar on, on the environment and things like that. But, um, but there's an interesting thing that happens in investment and funding and, um, and that's all sort of can be behind the scenes a little bit more. So, um, so I think that for me, it's, it, it, it really is maybe pulling in more of that and, um, and thinking of it in a, in a broader way um, and I'm still working on identifying what that looks like in my business but um, but that I guess would be my that's sort of my goal in terms of becoming more successful in um, in providing for myself and then also considering the greater community and how how our resources are you know what's happening to them and and how that impacts people. I like that a lot. Well, and you mentioned that earlier too, in regards to, you know, money being a way to improve our resources. And, and you know, and, and I also, and you do mention the environment and um, 
I also look at time as a resource too, mm-hmm. where, uh, you know, whether it's on a personal level, a community level, society level, world level, <laughs> where um, using money and that resource to improve our resources of, of time, I think is something that's important for me um, as mm-hmm. well, you know, where it provides more time, whether with family or friends or to do those service oriented things for um, helping our planet, helping the community, uh, you know, and providing an opportunity as well. So I think yeah. your intentions are super noble, <laughs> you know, it's super good. Uh, so, uh, and here's another question too, in, in relation to this being uh, the content supply podcast and related to content, um, how do you see content uh, be that video, blogs, podcasts, or visuals um, play a role in your business? It should probably play a bigger role. <laughs> um, I'm working on it, but yeah, I think that that is, it is something that I am trying to develop more of this year. I'm actually going to be working with someone to do some research and then, and then create some content from that. So I think it's so important. And I think for me, video in particular, if there's a video on a page and then there's a lot of text, there's no way I'm reading the text. Like guaranteed I'm clicking on the video and getting the gist of it from that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think it's so important. and. Um, in my business, it is probably lacking on the lacking side of things. So, um, but it's on my mind. And I think it is, you know, one thing that I really respect about um, Julie um, is the amount of content that she produces and provides to people. It's unbelievable. Um, like, I don't even know when she just created her latest course. Like, I have no idea when she had the time for that, but, <laughs> but somehow she did. So I think it's, um, it's, it's such a resource to, to be able to provide content that, is, that really has value and substance in it. Um, it's, it's definitely something that I am striving to, to do more of. So, and your, your videos great. look awesome. She, oh, thanks. I love them. They look great. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's very fun. So, I mean, Julie Stoyan, she is a common client of ours, right? So, yeah. Um, yeah. And so she's, I totally agree. She's a content machine uh, with what she produces and provides for people. So, Emily, I'm super glad we got to talk and we'll talk m- much more. Well, well enjoy the rest of your winter and thanks for being on. <laughs> this podcast and we'll talk soon okay it sounds good thank you cool. thanks emily bye bye so that about wraps it up for the show today thank you so much for listening the fact that you're able to drop into this conversation hopefully be inspired through the stories and ideas shared here is pretty awesome so i'm a huge fan of relationships and getting to know more people so if you have thoughts about the show want to leave a review even, have questions about content supply, or just want to connect anyway, you can find me across the socials at Dallin Need. And of course, go on over to contentsupply.com and check it out. Thanks again. I'm so glad you're here. And I can't wait to share more here at Content Supply. See ya.